Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders, and in this video I am going to do a deep dive into Bitbucket and SourceTree. In previous tutorials I went through Bitbucket and SourceTree rather quickly, but I wanted to go back through the online interface and the SourceTree application with more depth, and that way hopefully it will be a little bit easier to follow along in later tutorials. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have the Bitbucket online interface opened up here in Chrome, and now we're just going to go through the interface with a little more depth. So when you come to this page, this is actually sort of like your home page. So if I just click on this bucket icon up top, it takes me to my dashboard, which is this page. And on this page, we've got a left sidebar with a couple of options. Um, it's sort of saying, you got a pull request, a view all pull request section here, and then we can see our repositories. You can also sort your repositories here. So let's go through this left sidebar really quickly. Of course, we're on the dashboard or overview page now. If we click on the repositories page, it's going to take us to a really quick page that just shows us the repositories. We've got a couple of searching parameters, and we can also see which ones we're watching. You can click on a repository, but we're going to go through that a little bit later. Next, we've got our projects. Now, this account is not uh, a part of any teams, um, but if I were a product, part of a team, then I could organize my repos into projects, which is pretty useful. The next thing over on the left sidebar here is the pull requests. And I'm actually going to do a video a little bit later going into what exactly a pull request is. So stay tuned for that one. But on this pull request page, we can see the pull requests that are under review, watching your pull requests and the teams. We can also see issues. Of course, I don't have any issues on this profile because it's just sort of a demo profile. But again, you can sort uh, several different ways, uh, sort the issues several different ways. Next thing we have here is snippets. Now, I don't have any snippets either, but you could uh, create some snippets. We also have some uh, feedback feedback options over here. So if we go up to the top left here, again, I can just click on this, go back to my dashboard page. You can actually search. We do have a beta uh, code search here. So you may not see that on your account, or it may not say beta by the time you're watching this video. So we could just type something in here. Uh, and, you know, if we had uh, results for something, it would show here. If I X out of that, back, we can also create a new repository here if we click plus on the plus icon. And when you click that, it actually gives you the options to create a new repository, team, project, or snippet. Pretty cool. Now, if we go down to the bottom left, we can click on our user icon here, and you could click view your profile which is going to take you to your profile view page. You can look at uh, your public and private repositories, your snippets, teams, settings. You can look at uh, recent activity, repositories. You know, this is a pretty straightforward page. Again, over here, we've got snippets, teams, and settings. So I'll just go ahead and click on settings. And here we're actually editing the settings for a user. I could click here uh, if I had additional accounts and edit those, but I'm not signed in as any. Uh, as you can see here, we've got our full name. You can update uh, some details. You can change your avatar, picture, add a website, change your language. You could actually make your profile private as well. We do have uh, some additional preferences for shortcuts and consoles. You can add some email aliases if you have multiple email accounts linked to this account. Uh, you can edit your notification settings, so you could just totally disable email. You could uh, you can see what you're watching here, so it says I'm actually watching one repository, which is mine. And then you can sort of customize when you receive an email. So, so right now these are the options that uh, force an email to be sent to my account. Below we can see the plan details. So as you can see, I'm actually a free user here. So it says you're on the five users tiered plan. I've got no credit card on file. Zero build minutes using this period. We also have a limitation on um, file space. It's 10 gigs, which is pretty large. Um, so I don't necessarily think you'd fill this up unless you're creating a lot of Unity projects and pushing them all to Bitbucket. GitHub also has a size restriction, and I think it's important to note that there is a size restriction of two gigabytes uh, per repository. You should receive an email after one gigabyte of space taken up, like a soft warning, and then at two gigabytes, you can no longer push to that repository. All right, so moving on, we can see which users are on my plan. We can look at the git large file storage. Of course, I don't have any large uh, file storage 
files in here. I'm going to do another tutorial on this as well. This is a fairly new addition to Git, and I think it deserves its own tutorial. Next, we can look at the asset access management. We can see user groups, so you can add groups that can manage things within your repositories, projects, and things like that. We've got OAuth, app passwords, and access controls. That's a premium feature, so I don't have that. We can also look at uh, SSH keys. Of course, I don't have any for this account, but you could add SSH keys in if you wished. We've got two-step verification process here. Again, I don't have that set up. Um, you can look at connected accounts. So I could connect a GitHub account here. Uh, audit log and down here these bottom features or links are really just sort of integrations with Bitbucket and labs refers to like tests that they're running so this new nav I think is a lab and uh, the code search is another uh, lab that they're running so if I click on it so what we're seeing here is the Bitbucket UI refresh I don't see the code editor I said it was in beta but Maybe everyone's got that. Okay, so let's go back out real quickly, and we're actually going to go to the repository view page if I just click on a repository. And again, I've covered this page fairly extensively before, but I'm just going to go through it one more time. So over in the left sidebar, we've got our overview, source commits, branches, pull requests, uh, pipelines, downloads, and settings. So I'm just going to step through these pretty quickly because I've covered most of this before. If you click on your source, then you can see the files that are actually within your repo. You can create a new file if you wish or you could clone your repository and change branches as well if I had multiple branches. You can also look at the commits that have occurred to this repository by clicking on the commits button. Again, you can look at different branches and filter out the branches here, but I don't have uh, a bunch of different branches yet. You can click on your branches and this allows you to see all of the branches for your repository and create a new branch if you wish. You can look at the pull request for your repository. Naturally, I don't have one. I'm going to skip over the pipelines. If we look at downloads, it allows you to actually download the repository. So if you don't need uh, source tracking, you could just download the repository directly and you can click on your settings. And this allows you to edit the settings for this particular repository. So again, we can see the name, the size, uh, large file storage. You can see the access level. So this is actually a private repo, uh, allows only private forks. Uh, landing page uh, this is so when you click on the repository where do you go and you can choose to go to any of these different pages can link a website select language you could also down at the bottom transfer repository and delete repository if you wish over on the left is where you get a little more control so you could add uh, groups or users to the repository you can look at the access keys for the repository if you look under workflow we've got branch permissions and this uh, basically gives us permissions on a on a branch level so instead of sort of setting permissions on a repository level we can change it to branch uh, level permissions you can set the default viewers add webhooks and links also, uh, again, we've got another link here to our large file storage, a wiki, and wiki's pretty obvious. You can create one for Bitbucket. I believe you can also create, and you can also create one for GitHub if you're using GitHub. You can use the issue tracker. So if you have an issue tracker, well, you could add an issue tracker. So right now I don't have one. So you could add one and then add a new issue message uh, under pipelines. We're not going to worry about that. So let's go back out now to our repository page. And as I've covered in other videos, we've got a repository name up here. We've got the connection type to this repository and a download link for the repository, as well as a uh, copyable link that will allow us to clone the repository. Under here, you can see that I don't have a readme, but you could add a readme to this repository if you wished. Over to the right, you can see that we've got a button that will allow us to invite users to this repo if you wish. And you can also see the recent activity that has occurred on this repository. We could share this repository and even unwatch this repository if we wished. Okay, now that we have covered the online interface, let's take a look at the source tree desktop application. And I've already actually got it opened up here. So just pull both of those windows up to the front. On this smaller window, you can see that we've got uh, a list for our local and our remote repositories. Now, if I had additional remote repositories, they'd be listed here, or we could create a new repository. We could clone from the URL, create a remote repository, add existing local repository. Uh, we could scan a directory or create a local uh, repository or a new repository group. And of course, we could clone the repository by simply clicking here. Up here, we've got a little uh, settings icon and you can change the accounts associated with this source tree application and this window is really pretty straightforward so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in it we are gonna go into this much more detailed and in-depth window here though okay so in this window we've really got a lot going on uh, I'm gonna cover the top 
portion first. Up here you can cre you can create a new commit or commit your current changes for your branch. You could pull the repository, so if I click that, it's going to pull from origin, remote branch to pull, master of course. See here, got a couple of options, commit merge change commit merged changes immediately, include messages, create new commit, even if fast forward merge, rebase instead of merge. I wouldn't really worry about the rebasing or any of these other options. You could just commit merge changes immediately. That should be fine. Um, if you had additional branches, when you click on that, you could see the other branches here. Obviously we have the option to refresh that. And if I had other recently added a new branch, it should show up there. Okay, I'm just going to go out of there. We also have the push button here, and that allows you to push commits from your local repository to your remote repository and a fetch. And I'm going to go into what fetch does in a later video, but basically this does a similar thing to pull. Um, so where pull pulls commits from a remote and fetch fetches commits from remotes. So they sound really similar. Uh, there, there are some differences, so I will be sure to cover that a little bit later. We also have the ability to create a new branch. So if I just click on here, then I can just create a new branch and commit the work and copy parent. I could choose a specific commit if I wish, but I just uh, typically when you're creating a new branch, you're going off of the working copy and you could immediately check out the new branch after creating it. You can also delete branches this way. Most places I've worked don't worry about deleting branches. I think you would only really delete branches if your repository is getting really big. So you can also merge branches, which is pretty important. Uh, let's say I had another branch I needed to merge with master, then I could very easily just do that through this interface. And again, we've got several options here. I could also stash, of course, Stash won't work right now. It's sort of grayed out because I don't have any commits to actually stash. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with some of these terms, branch, merge, stash, fetch, uh, don't worry about that. We are going to go into those terms a little bit later. I just want to make sure that we have a really good understanding of the interfaces first because I know it can be difficult when you're learning something new. Um, if you don't know the interface, you're trying to learn the interface, and I'm talking about all this other stuff, you know. Um, so I feel like it's really important to understand the interface first, and then we can get into the Git details a little bit later. So in our left sidebar here, we have our file status. Of course, I've got nothing to commit, but if I had added files or edited files, they would show up in this window here. We can look at the history. So this is going to show us commits to this. Uh, repository we can search so if I wanted to search for something probably not gonna get anything again doesn't look like it looks like it's uh, oh yeah and you can change what you're searching so that was actually a commit message uh, you can search for the SS SHA on a commit the branch file changes user uh, and you can also change the date so right now it's set to well that's interesting it's looking into the future source tree can see into the future okay over here on the left we can see the branches and you could also choose to hide or show the branches uh, you can really do that with all of these little sidebar links here you can look at tags I don't have any tags you can look at the remote so I've got the origin is my remote we've got head and master here you can look at your stashes again I don't have any so it's not popping up sub modules and sub trees don't have any so it's not really letting me click on those I'm going to go back up to the top here. Now, I could click and show uh, my repository in Finder, which is kind of useful if you need to look at a particular file within your repository. You can also launch a terminal application here. When you click this, it's going to launch uh, Terminal on Mac. So if I look down at the bottom, it is, in fact, launching Terminal. I don't really like to use Terminal. I like the iTerm application a little bit more. We can also uh, adjust our settings here. If I just click on settings, it uh, allows us to do a commit template. We can look at the remote. So this shows the uh, remote that I have for this repository, some additional security. If we look at advanced, we can see the gitignore file. So I could edit that gitignore file if I wished. You've got the option to do some git text replacements. You can use the global user settings. Um, you, know, you can even edit the config file if you wish. If I click down here, this allows us to actually see uh, or customize what we see in this window. All right, so let's go back up to the top really quickly. And again, we can just see that we've got these same options within here with the uh, addition of a few other options, such as the git LFS and git flow. 
um, add or link a subtree, add a remote, uh, check out. So we've really got a few other options inside of our top menu. I suggest you go through and check that out when you've got some time, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time in that. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new regarding the Bitbucket and Source Tree interfaces. Again, this is just sort of making sure we know where buttons are, what they do, and all that other stuff within the applications and interfaces. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.